you with me from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This morning, for our sermon tonight, we hear several verses from Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 20. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. These are your words, Heavenly Father, sanctified by your truth. Not may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Be seated. In the name of Jesus Christ, your fellow man. So this morning, we're going to deal with the doctrine of election. Doctrine, doctrine of predestination. And it's a doctrine that is clearly taught in Scripture. And it's a doctrine that is first and foremost there for our comfort. To answer the question for us, how can I be sure that I am among the saved? How can I be sure that I can get here to heaven. And so what I'm going to do this morning is start out with an illustration to help us understand how this doctrine of predestination of the election, the doctrine of God has chosen certain people from before eternity to be saved. Here, here's the illustration. <coughs> Let's suppose my, my dad says to me, I have decided from before you were born to get you from here to there. And nothing will deter me from getting you from there to here to there. And I'm going to put you in this vehicle, this vehicle that I have designed. And this is the only vehicle that will get you from here to there. And this vehicle that I have designed, that you are in, no one will be impressed by. In fact, when, you see, when they see you in this vehicle, they will probably laugh at you. And it will seem like a long trip. And it will be a difficult trip. And along the way, I will talk to you, and I will say, listen to me, and you will listen to me. And I will tell you, I will get you from here to there. And I will keep on assuring you, while you are in this vehicle, I will get you from here to there. And along the way, I will point you to signs along the way. Signs that say you are in the right world. Signs that are designed to tell you and assure you that my decision to get you from here to there will come true. Will be assured of the comfort. But along the way, you will whine. You will say, Are we there yet? And you will complain. And you will say, You're going too slow. At the time, you will say, You're going too fast. Slow down. And you will have doubts whether or not this vehicle will get you to the end. And you will look at other cars out your window. Cars that are fancier, more impressive, more comfortable. And you'll be tempted to say, I wish I were in that car, or that car instead of this car. And when I can't take it anymore, when I can't take your whining, your complaining, your doubting, and your snide comments, I will get angry, and I will stop the car, and I will take you out, and I will swat you. I'll put you back in the car, 
And you will say, I'm sorry. And I'll keep talking to you. I'll say, listen to my voice. And you will. And I will point you to the signs along the way to tell you you're, you're in the right vehicle or you're in the right way. And you will say, I trust you. Thank you. And along the way, the roads will be smooth sometimes, but a lot of times they'll be difficult and dangerous and rough. And the weather will be terrible, there'll be storms. And there'll be other crazy drivers out there who will try to run you off the road and smash into you. And you will be scared, and you will have fears, and you will have doubts. And you will say, I don't think I can make it. And when that happens, I want you to talk to me. I want you to tell me of your fears, your complaints, I want you to cry out to me. And you will, and I will listen. But then again, I will talk to you. I will say, listen to my voice. And you will, and I will direct you to the signs that say you're on the right road, you're good, you're on the right way. And you will say, I trust you. I take comfort in your words your promises, and your signs. Thank you. I have decided to get you from here to there. And I am explaining to you how it's going to happen. And that you see these things happening, that I told you would happen, you will be comforted, and you will be assured, and you will be confident in my decision to get you from here to there. <coughs> so please understand that my decision to get you from here to there is intimately tied to here's how it's going. And that's the way it is with our election, our predestination to heaven. God's preordained decision to get us from here to heaven. And that predestination, that election, that choice from eternity must not be divorced from or separated from here's how it's going. And to find out how it's going to happen, we don't go here to our mind, to our reason. We don't go here to our heart, how we feel, to our emotions. To find out how it's going to happen, <coughs> we go to the Word of God. And there God tells us how it's going to happen. And what does that word say about how it's going to happen? Well, the word first of all tells us that God from eternity decided to send his only begotten son to take on human flesh and die for the sins of all people of all time. The word tells us that the elect in Christ will listen to the call of Christ, come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. The Word of God tells us that those chosen in Christ will repent, believe, be baptized, be absolved of all their sins, will receive the sacrament, The Word of God tells us that those chosen of Christ will come to faith in Christ will be free from the mastery of sin and at the same time struggle with sin daily. And so the Word of God tells us that those who are left to repent and believe and be absolved and receive the sacrament. And they will rejoice. 
The Word of God tells us that the elect was chosen in Christ. We'll pray. God will bear fruit. We'll love the Lord. We'll love our neighbor. And so again, the Word tells us that the elect will repent, believe in Christ, be absolved, and receive the sacrament. And be thankful. And the Word of God says that the elect will be in this life afflicted, persecuted, have doubts, may wander away for a while, but again they will repent and believe in Christ to be absolved, receive the sacrament, and thank God. The Word says, in the words of Jesus, that no one will snatch them out of my hands. In other words, they will be preserved and die in the faith. Again, Paul says they will be called by the gospel. They will be justified because of the work of Christ, the justification they receive by faith for Christ's sake. A justification through faith that comes to them in word and sacrament. And then they will be glorified. In other words, whenever God's chosen in Christ, pastors and laity alike, are directed to what the Word of God says about how it's going to happen, they are seeing their election in action. Whenever we see these things taking place that the Word describes, we are seeing our election in action. And when we see that election in action, we are comfortable, we are assured, we are encouraged. So, when you and I want to know if we are among the chosen of God from eternity, especially when the stations come, and they will, when doubts arise, when sin is oppressive and unrelenting, and it is. When the master accuser, Satan, accuses us so that we are tempted to despair and do to death. When we are confronted by the guilt of our failures as a Christian, as a husband, wife, father, father, mother, son, daughter, whatever vocation we have. When we are overwhelmed with all that needs to get done, but doesn't get done. When we observe culture going to hell in a hand basket, when we think of who might be elected the next president, or the other person that might be elected the next president, we look around and see wickedness increasing in the love of most bright and cold, and we see the divine states of marriage and the church being crashed. When our own families fall apart, when loneliness and depression take hold, when we or a loved one are told that cancer is terminal, and the loved one dies, and the loved one dies Christ. When it seems like everything in our lives, the whole universe, is against us. Or, as St. Paul says in Romans 8 here, when trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sorrow, are the realities of life, because as St. Paul says we have a big target on our back, 
He says, as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered a sheep to be slaughtered. We want to know. <coughs> Am I among the sick? Am I among the predestined? Will I make it from here to heaven? We don't look into our hearts. We don't look into our hearts for the right things. We look to the Word of God, where God says, Here how, here's how it's going to We listen to the voice of Jesus. We listen to the voice of the Shepherd, who said, Nobody comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the people, the only people. We listen to the words of Jesus, who had his apostle write to us in Romans chapter 8. He who did not spare his own son. But gave him up for us all. How did not also along with him graciously give us all things? And who also said there in Romans 8, Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God. It's also interceding for us. We listen to the voice of Jesus, who had the same apostle right regarding our baptism. He saved us through the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out in some money through Jesus Christ our Savior, but having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope, the sure hope of eternal life. And we listen to the words of Jesus when he said, and we'll say to us again in just a few minutes, take a need. My body. Take and drink. This cup is the New Testament in my blood to shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. So, listening to the voice of Jesus and doing as he has told us to do is how our election takes place. It is our election of predestination. And what, is, what does this election mean? Well, according to Paul, it means that all things work together for good. For those who love and who are called according to his purpose. All things. Whether we see it or not, whether we sense it or not. All things. It means that we will be conformed to the image of the Son, as Paul says. It means that nobody, nobody will bring a charge, Paul says, against those whom God has chosen. Why? Because it is God who justifies for the sake of His Son, Jesus Christ. It means that in all these things that happen to us in this life, in all these things, Paul says, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. And it means that I as a pastor believe, teach, and confess that a Christian who listens to the voice of Jesus will believe and will confess with St. Paul in Romans 8. I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any promise, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of which will be able to separate from the love of God Christ Jesus our Lord. So we listen to the voice of Jesus. Jesus who said, My sheep, hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life. And they will never perish. And no one will snatch them in the power of Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the name, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all of us, may keep your
your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.